Really want to say thanks to Jennifer, who was listening yesterday, who made the case for Bernie Sanders' viability, made a powerful case for it, and then used uh, an article as evidence, uh, the recording of Donald Trump saying in 2016 that Bernie Sanders was the candidate he didn't want to run against. Uh, and then there was some back and forth about that. And I want to share that because I thought it was somewhat elucidating. I think it was 61 percent of Iowa voters last night in entrance polls said that they were evaluating candidates based on their ability to beat Donald Trump, 37 percent based on if they liked their policies uh, well enough and or, you know, if they liked their policies best, should we say. The case for Bernie Sanders viability is a is a strong one he is built a historically strong. Uh, grassroots movement, uh, unseen, untold. I mean, Howard Dean initiated some of this. Barack Obama carried it forward, and Bernie Sanders has gone further in just massive online uh, donation support. He makes the case for uh, wealth disparities and disrupting oligarchy uh, maybe better than anybody has made in 50 years. Uh, there is another case as well. I just want to offer... Uh, both sides, not both sides with Charlottesville racists on one side, to be clear, just with different analyses of viability. In 2016, it's pretty apparent Trump was a change candidate. He was trying to change from Obama. Change isn't the word he used. In fact, change was Obama's word. But that's what he was saying. He wanted to mix stuff up. And so was Bernie. Both of them used arguments of the system is rigged. Middle America is getting hosed by bad trade deals. Even both saying Wall Street is hosing you. Uh, those arguments definitely overlapped. It's also fair to say that Trump stole lines from Bernie Sanders. Trump wasn't talking about that stuff on The Apprentice, to be very clear. Bernie's been making that case for decades. In 2020, though, I can't imagine it being different. Those who are saying the viability case is different in 2020 and 2016, I think they have an argument to make, as was made last night at MSNBC, uh, that uh, that Bernie earned, you know, nearly 50 percent, you know, in the, in the high 40s percent of Democratic support. And now in polls, he's more like in the 20s. So about half of that support has decided they might Hillary Clinton might not have been their first choice, but. Bernie Sanders might not be their first choice either. So there has been some potential change just on viability. Not saying who you should think would be the best president. Uh, but I also want to point out the dynamic. Just let's call this pundit corner. Now, I suspect Donald Trump's argument, his statement of the case, is going to be different in 2020. I think his statement of the case is going to be more like, let's keep the economy and stock market going. And his choice of opponent might have changed since 2016. I could even imagine him fearing Bloomberg the most. To be clear, I am not a Bloomberg nor a Biden uh, supporter in the primary. In fact, my own take is this stuff is pretty hard to predict, that making decisions based on viability primarily, I think, has a lot of risk born into it. And I urge the odd notion of just picking the person you think would make the best president. Uh, and all that said, of course, I think so many of us are deeply inspired by the Bernie Sanders movement. I want to offer that back and forth on viability because I know that one of the things we're here to do is arm you for, as Tom says, the water cooler wars and give you uh, information analysis that could be useful to you.